guys welcome to another homage video so what I try to do in this video is look at a lot of things that have either shaped our hobby or made a big splash or special appearance in the hobby and then kind of faded away sometimes it's stuff that only I came across and sometimes it's stuff that a lot of you may have seen this one is probably more that I something I came across early on in my hobby not early on but uh, some time ago in my hobby was was called Osborne cutout models and basically these are simply uh, cut out and paste uh, sets that allow you to build either complete buildings or in many instances even complete uh, little towns or forts or cities castles so they were all pretty much themed this one here was Roman. It was a Roman fort. So when you finish, you would have this Roman fort. They came with instructions, which I used to really like because one of the things you could double the instructions for was they had these sections of the buildings, if I can focus in on that. So they would show you these sections of the layout of each of the places and if you did miniature or role playing, you could actually take these designations and key them to either events or items. So if you were planning a game, G2 would be this building here. So you would already make a note of what was going to happen at G2 or E2 or E3. So it was a nice little diagram or map. And I used to photocopy this, blow it up, and then you could use that separately uh, to play games with and to kind of map and plan whether it was going to be an attack or an assault or whatever or whether it was just like I said maybe some kind of role playing which was going to take place in these buildings and they did that with all of them uh, now like I said the instructions were very easy to follow I think these were intended basically for children school age children so the instructions were, were very easy to follow. I used to, I remember vividly sitting up in the evening watching movies with my wife when I was married at the time. And we'd watch a movie together and I would sit there and basically be cutting out or lining the perforations because they always told you to score. I guess they called it score. You would score the perforations so that they were easier to fold. And so once you cut them out, you had a lot of scoring to do. And so I would always try to do that when I was sitting somewhere with my wife in the evening at the end of the day. You know, I'd spend an hour or two scoring all my perf perforations. And then, you know, later on I could start on the build. Uh, so, but they were always easy to put together. Another nice thing that came with them, which you really can't tell, is each of them had kind of a layout map. So if you look at this, this was actually a layout so this would be one page it opens up on the other side here and it would be a layout map that you would sit the buildings on so even if you didn't want to use all the buildings in here you had kind of foundations where you could put other buildings or substitute in other buildings and I used to actually glue these to a poster board or glue these to some cardboard and it would really make the structure solid. I had some of these in storage for years and years pre-built that never really got too bad. I mean, they got a little warped and bent here and there, but they pretty much remained what I had built them as. And that was just straight out the pack. I didn't reinforce them or anything. So you had the themes. You had the Roman theme, which there was a Roman fort. And then there was a Roman villa which I never had the fort, but I did have the villa. This was always nice because you could use this as kind of a, a leader's or character's headquarters. These are your villa grounds. Again, beautiful detail. This is another layout of the villa, right, with designations of where everything is at, everything is taking place. You know, you have H, J, the wells, outhouses, colonnade, workrooms, walls, house, servants' quarters, storehouse, and stables. So that was always uh, nice. And uh, you had different themes. So like I said, this one was a Roman theme. 
So you had the Roman villa. Let me bring that back out again. You had the Roman villa and the Roman fort. So I never owned the fort. This one I just picked up recently when I started trying to get these. You have a lost temple, which I actually owned and it started building, but I never quite finished. So basically it is a temple surrounded by kind of this faux jungle. Uh, but it's kind of a la Indiana Jones thing. Some of them have like little traps and doors that slide in and out. Uh, you see here, again, you have all of the areas for any kind of gameplay. If you have characters adventuring in the jungle, you can either, you can just put right here the designation. You write them down and you write on a sheet of paper what they would encounter there. Uh, this one is actually one of the harder ones to find, although it does pop up still. Uh, you had the medieval ones. Now this was my favorite one, but before I show you this, I'm gonna show you some of the other ones. Okay, so I've got the whole collection out for you guys. Uh, so we saw a look at the, uh, the Lost Temple, the Roman Fort, and the Roman Villa. Now, there was another Roman themed one, which was the Roman Amphitheater or Arena which I actually used this several times in some games uh, and I actually even used it as a cover photo on one of my games called a fatal blow it had this false floor you could put in the arena to do little sea battles which I always thought was cool you couldn't really seat anybody in the arena seats but it was definitely a scale size arena this section would pull out and you could put figures there in the middle so I was very glad to find this one again. This is another one that can get a little difficult to find. So after we got through with the Romans, you had uh, a Viking settlement. As far as I know, this was the only kind of Viking themed one. But it was a Viking settlement which had a Kind of a waterway just a small town you see a ship being constructed there a ship on the water i don't know if i don't remember building the viking settlement so this again may be one i picked up subsequent when i was rebuilding my collection there was an american fort this one is kind of difficult to find uh And actually, one of the things that happened is as they, as after they first did this, they began to republish them. So a lot of them would wind up with different col colors or different names. So for example, this one is called an American Fort, but it also goes by the name of Wild West Fort. So the Wild West Fort is very hard to find. I actually bought this on eBay and it is actually in German right this is not even in in English but uh because the one that says Wild West Fort which is actually the exact same one if you look at it now that says American Fort does tend to be harder to find and harder to locate and that's something that I just realized. Like, I had been searching for the Wild West Fort for some time. And when I finally got it, I just realized it was the same as the one, the American Fort. Now, they also did a, well, we saw the Roman Villa. And I think, let's get out. Uh, we saw the Roman Fort. So then they did medieval think ones. So you had the medieval town, which again was one of my favorites. So this would allow you to make a wonderful town layout. And 
then if you put several sets together, you could put a town, the village, the castle, and the cathedral. And I actually had that entire layout at one time. And it looked just like this. I mean, it's just a sprawling table of scenery that you could just drop miniatures. And even if you don't game with it, because I will say now, the gaming scale is not, uh, it's not 28 millimeter. On here it says it is a OO to HO scale model. I would say these would be perfect for 20, 20 millimeter figures or smaller. But I use 25 millimeter figures in there without much problem. They, they're a little large, but it's still, it's, you can still sell it if you're just gaming with it. So I've never had any real issue with using my 25 millimeter. 32 would probably be too big, but if you got 25, maybe 28 millimeter figures, they will look just fine in here. So this would give you the model town, which kind of has a road and some buildings. This is the castle that you saw at the end here. So that allows me to build the castle. This is the medieval village. Which would be this section of it there. And the last one is the cathedral. And that's the medieval, medieval cathedral, which was a very, another very nice one that I had for quite a while. So if you can get a hold of all four of them, you would have enough to build basically an entire medieval city. This is not featured in there, but it is compatible. This is actually my favorite of the kit. It's called the medieval port. You get a small little ship you can build. And then there is a kind of a harbor area, a port area, which just looks lovely, looks wonderful. So, and again, you can see here, these are model ships that, you know, they're just like standees. You know, the funny thing now is I see people offering stuff very similar to this on Kickstarters now. And a book like this, you know, somebody would want to charge you $40. And back in the day, you could get these things for, I don't know, what was the retail price on these? Some of these were like $9. $9.95. Nowadays, the prices vary. Some of them can still be found, you know, between $5 and $9. Some of them go $25 to $40, just depending on how rare it is. There was also a Greek temple, which I'm not sure if this was compatible with any of the other Greek uh, scenes, although it, is, it does have your traditional layout. I never built this one. So this one is kind of new to me. I never actually built the Greek temple. Uh, there is a Crusader castle. This one was not compatible. It's a, actually it's a lot smaller than the other castle, and it's kind of its own thing. But it is a Osborne, as you can see there by that diagram blowout. And the only fantasy one they ever did that I'm aware of is the Wizard's Castle. Which was kind of cool, cool and quirky. He had this upper room here with all these mechaneries. He had these other rooms that opened up and revealed different things. He had a little path up the mountain that you could send characters up. There were all kind of gadgets and equipment. So this one was actually kind of cool. But as far as I'm aware, they never did any other like fantasy themed ones uh, besides the Wizard's Castle. Now, having shown you guys all that, I think I should also show you this. So every now and then you'll see stuff like this, the way things work, build your own sawmill. Now, this is not an Osborne kit. And the re that's the reason I'm showing it to you is, first of all, if you look here, there's no instructions. 
There's no inset of the completed thing. Uh, and for the most part, you know, this is a lot of stuff with not a lot of detail on what you're supposed to be doing. Plus, I have no idea what scale this comes out at. You also will find things like this. Again, this is not an Usborne kit. Build your own farmyard. So, there's no scale in here. There's no instructions. There's no inset. You know, there's kind of some interesting information, I guess, on farm life. And then there's the build and some pictures. I wouldn't call them instructions, but there's some pictures. You do look like you do get a, a foundation mat like Osborne gives. And some of the some of the cutouts do from look familiar. But as far as I can say, tell, this says Paragon Publishing. So I don't know if that's in the division of Osborne, but these are not the same as the Osborne kits. So I just wanted to point that out that if you are looking for these build kits, they're not all the same. The Osborne ones to me are like, you know, they set the standard uh, for these types of kits. And those are the ones I remember and the ones I just wanted to pay uh, homage to. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this kind of look back. You know, I hope you found it interesting. Maybe found something that uh, you might want to investigate further. Take care and God bless. Thank mm -hmm. you.